This is the Washington Times front page for Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The fallout from the aborted semi-coup staged by the mercenary Wagner Group forces over the weekend in Russia will be felt for months. Mike Glenn, Dave Sands, and Tom Howe report a seething Russian President Vladimir Putin denounced it as a treacherous mutiny that was doomed to fail in a televised address. Wagner Group mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin called it a demonstration of our protest against the incompetently waged war in Ukraine by Putin's generals. A still murky deal to call off the rebellion and allow Prigozhin to relocate his operations to neighboring Belarus clearly shook Putin and his top aides, already on the defensive over a so far unsuccessful 16-month-old invasion of Ukraine. Analysts say the short-lived mutiny has cast an even harsher spotlight on the reality of the Russian state. Ben Wolfgang reports the power structure established by Putin, in which he wields ultimate authority over various factions competing with one another for influence and wealth, now seems to be coming undone. Rather than a powerful player on the world stage, specialists say Russia is now a country in full-blown crisis. They say it resembles a declining empire grappling with its slow, painful death, and less of a modern-day global leader, and more of a zombie superpower. Russia's economy faces even more uncertainty in the years to come, as Europe rapidly frees itself from its oil and gas usage. President Biden has embarked on a new mission to convince voters his Bidenomics economic plan is boosting the lives of middle-class Americans. White House correspondent Jeff Mordock reports the president is banking on his ability to sell voters on a vision that more government spending and taxes on the wealthy will boost the middle class better than Republican promises of tax cuts and smaller government. Biden is pivoting to an economic message because he knows he must sway public opinion with the economy a top concern for voters in presidential elections. Public confidence in his handling of the economy remains low during a period of high inflation and a difficult housing market. An Associated Press poll released last month found only 33% of adults approved of the president's economic performance, and just 24% said national economic conditions were in good shape. The leading exiled Iranian dissident group says the Biden administration is downplaying attacks against its followers in Europe to placate Iran's regime. Guy Taylor reports the MEK group came under renewed scrutiny after Albanian authorities raided a camp the group had established in Albania. And in France, an Iranian opposition rally planned for next month in Paris will not be held because of the risk of violence. The Biden administration, which has sought detente with Iran, has held a cautious posture toward the MEK and downplayed the Albanian raid on the group's complex. The White House has not commented, but the State Department told Guy that U.S. officials were informed of the raid in Albania and were confident it was conducted lawfully. And finally, Stephen Dynan looks into some of the details and accusations from IRS criminal investigators about Hunter Biden's actions. They spent years building a case against him on tax law violations and said they interviewed 60 witnesses, issued subpoenas, and followed the trail of his income, businesses, and expenses, particularly those he tried to write off. In some cases, the agents have already provided their information to Congress, either in documents or by reading messages into the transcript of the testimony they delivered. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at WashTimes for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo. George Gerbo.